it will get you started with the Berlin buzzwords. Thank you for attending here uh, in today's talk. And we'll talk about the hip sizing and GC tuning for Solar and Friends. Uh, this is my colleague Radu. I'm Rafael. And uh, yeah, I think we can get uh, with the meat, right? Uh, and starting on with uh, everything, we just don't see the slides. Oh yes, that's yes. better. Thank you very much. So uh, starting off uh, with everything, uh, when we talk about solar and friends, what we actually mean? Well, you know, uh, you can consider Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, solar uh, as friends. They do not know that they are friends, honestly speaking sometimes, but they are friends. At least let's assume that the, this is the case for today's presentation. When it comes to Apache Lucene itself, well, that's not the case really, or it all depends. It depends on how you actually use it, how you deploy it. If that's running on a separate server and it's a standalone process, not a part of your application, well, you can take what we will say today again into consideration. Well, if that's a part of your application, take all of what you hear here uh, with the grain of salt, right, and adjust. And when talking about solar itself, let's consider it a diva. And a diva wants to be uh, solo on the stage, right? And it likes to dance and show off and so on. So solar likes it similar. It wants to be a main actor on the box or the only actor on the box, which is also true for containerized environments. Uh, you want your solar to be the main actor because otherwise it will struggle and compete for resources. I.O., CPU, memory. All of that uh, is precious for solar, especially on a large data sets. And uh, without it, uh, you know, your application will struggle, your solar will struggle. So uh, in general, the solution will not work as you would like it to be or as it intended to be. So keep that in mind. And also, forget about coupling. Uh, back in the day, Solar was released as a deployable war archive, right? So you could have taken it, put in the Tomcat, for example, and run along with your application. Well, don't do it. Uh, first of all, it's not released like that anymore. And second of all, don't do it again for the same uh, things that we just uh, talked. So compete for it will compete for resources. And you don't want to do it because all of the applications running on the box or in that container environment will suffer unless, unless your data is very small. Then you can use things like embedded solar server and so on. Uh, but in most cases, uh, the higher you go with the amount of data you have, you will probably not want to couple that. Think about solar for, of solar like MySQL, MongoDB, or any kind of service that is external to your application. You just use it. You want to scale it eventually. So keep that in mind. And of course, we are all here for the heap. So let's talk about the heap. This is a simplified view of the heap. In general, it's uh, divided into certain spaces, uh, like for example, the perm space, the old generation, the young generation, and so on. And today we'll focus on the JVM heap, so those two regions, the young and old generation, uh, combined together. However, keep in mind that this, what you see here, is very simplified, and it will uh, matter how those things are uh, laid out in the memory, uh, depending on the garbage collector that you are using. This is, for example, a very simplified view for, for like old Java versions like Java 8 where you had like CMS Java garbage collector and so on. Uh, but in general, you'll have the young generation and old generation. You may have multiple of those. But uh, when it comes to young generation, what will be there is the data that was just assigned. So if you create an object in memory, if you assign something, uh, load the data from file and so on, uh, it will be put into the young generation space. Then the young generation garbage collector will run and promote those objects through the survivor spaces. Once enough cycles happen, it will then be moved into the old generation space and say, oh, okay, I'm good. Now I'm a proper like object. It will, I will stay there for a longer period of time. And you can consider those older objects like caches, segments memory, uh, transient indexing and querying data, though 
it, it really, really depends on how fast you dereference the objects and the data inside the, uh, your application, on it, or in that case, solar. For example, if those operations are very fast, the transient indexing and data and querying data may actually not go out of the young generation space and will be quickly discarded, thrown away, and this is where garbage collector is needed to free up the space, right? But moving on. One of the questions that we usually get when talking to customers is should I care about the OS cache? Well, you should, but it also depends on how much you should put an attention to it and how much actually focus you need to put on this OS cache. With small indices, you can think about the OS cache as a RAM drive, right? Once it's read into memory, Solar will, using appropriate directory implementation like MMAP, uh, it will just reference the data from memory and quickly serve that during the seek operation. This is uh, like, you know, read from memory is very fast. However, for large indices, uh, terabytes of data, you'll probably, the probably, unless you really have those powerful, you know, beefy machines, you'll probably not have everything in RAM. And this is where IOPS matter. This is where the SIG operation that's actually done by the oper by disk will uh, result in actual and dictate the performance of your queries to uh, some extent. So keep that in mind. And moving forward with the heap, let's start with the initial settings. And as usual, this is a question that appears. What should I start with? Well, start with less than 50% of the total memory of your system, but not more than 30 gigs. We'll talk about not why, not more, in just a few, so in just a few minutes. And keep in mind that your XMX and XMS uh, values should be equal and always pre-touch. Why? Why? Because you want to avoid any kind of heap resizing. That's an expensive operation. It also depends on the Java version. The newer Java versions, of course, are more efficient and better when it comes to that operation. But still, if we can avoid it and potentially avoid slowdown of our queries and indexing, that's way better. Uh, so how do we start? Well, we need to start with measurements. Uh, that's the key. Uh, point here. As similar to relevancy, JVM heap uh, sizing and tuning is all about monitoring and constant observation of what will happen to the heap and how it reflects your data changes, your queries changes, your traffic changes, and that all will be reflected in how you actually operate your solar, how you size your heap, and how you tune your GC. So take the highest peak, take the lowest peak, and this is the first part that you can start with, right? So multiply the lower part by two, this is your baseline. And remember, keep monitoring because things will change. And how you can actually start thinking when to tune? Well, you can observe a few things, but before that, just one additional uh, thing that I would forgot uh, regarding the highest uh, peak of the hip size. Remember about the headroom. Why? Because depending on your traffic, depending on your queries, and depending on the extensiveness of your indexing operations, you need more of the headroom left uh, for, to allow actually to, uh, solar to properly work. Uh, the more expensive queries you have, the more headroom you need, and so on. So, you know, the, in general, the more expensive operations, the more memory you potentially need. But again, that will be shown in your monitoring tool, whatever you use for that. But want to observe that. You know, when the heap is too low, you'll start with lots of garbage collection. That will be clearly visible, and you'll see high CPU usage, less resources for indexing and searching. Next, circuit breakers start stripping, and finally you get into out-of-memory operations when, in most cases, things just break and not work anymore, and we want to avoid that as much as possible. When it comes to the heap, to, when it's too large, it's not that problematic, but you will be limited when it comes to I.O. caches, and in some implementations of garbage collector, like the old good CMS, you will see that it works extensively to free up uh, the garbage that is there on the old generation. Okay, so when it comes to large heaps, we have to talk about pointers. So these are normally 64 bits. 
And, um, but the JVM, if the heap size is up to 32 GB, will compress them to 32. Um, but depending on the platform, from about 30 gigabytes to 32, um, the, objects, the, the pointers are still compressed, but there's a bit of CPU overhead in, in computing that address. So that's where the don't go over 30 gigabytes advice generally comes from. In practice, what this means is that 32 GB, you'll lose a few gigabytes of heap, depending on the number of objects you have referenced. Um, and so if you want to feel the difference, you have to go, let's say, about 45 GB or higher. It's, so it's just a hump. It's not really a limit. Um, and if you use ZGC, that all doesn't matter, because it, all pointers will be 64 bits. So speaking of GC, um, the first question is, like, which problems can we solve by tuning uh, GC? And I think we have three here to talk about. One and the most frequent one is when the GC falls behind. So effectively, we're allocating more memory than we can uh, garbage collect in time, and eventually the heap runs out. Um, another one is uh, if the overhead is too high. We're using too much CPU, and the other one is if the pause times of the garbage collection interfere with the query latency, for example. So how do we know if the GC falls behind? I think the easiest way is to take a heap dump. If it runs out of memory, you can make the JVM take a heap dump when it runs out of memory. Uh, otherwise, you can take it manually, but you have to catch it when it's really high. And then open that heap dump with something like Eclipse Memory Analyzer and check what's the referenced heap. If the referenced heap is about the heap size, it means we're using all of it. It means uh, we just need more heap. It's a heap problem. It's not a GC problem. It could be that it's a very expensive query or something that, like that that blew up off the heap. If the memory referenced is much smaller, it means the rest is garbage, which could have been, should have been collected it is a GC problem to, to solve. Um, when it comes to overhead, this is relatively easy to, to look at. All these search engines expose um, GC time. Um, and in general, CPU time is um, measured per core. So you have to divide, divide by the number of cores when you compute the ratio. Um, one thing to mention here is that if the GC runs hot, you'll have to also look at the heap usage, because if the heap usage is high, then it's normal for it to run hot. It's, again, a heap problem, not a GC problem. When it comes to pause times, they all log collection times, and collection times are not necessarily pause times. They are, for example, with G1, the young generation, that is top of the world, so the collection time is the pause time. But with um, old gen collections, it's not the case. The easiest thing to do is you can look in the logs, these are much more verbose. You can see why the collection happened and how long the application was stopped for. And yeah, you get just a lot more information. But again, a high pause time does not mean it's a GC problem. It could be, again, a heap problem. If the heap is high, then sure, GC is going to struggle. And um, it's going to, to generate longer pauses, depending on the, on the garbage collector. Um, it is a GC problem if it's expected, right? So for example, with G1, we have this target pause time. And if the target pause time is just too high for what I need, then of course I need to lower that. Um, and sometimes it just can be like um, it cleaned up a, a small amount of heap in, in a very long time. And this could be, again, not a necessarily a GC problem. Could be a noisy neighbor. Could be a JVM bug. Um, it sometimes happens. So on to GC implementations. The default G1 will work well in, I think, most use cases. Um, but for very small heaps, I think the parallel collector will still be better because it's more efficient. And for large heaps, ZGC might work, might work better. So on to tunable. So for the parallel collector, and this also applies to G1, the young gen will also use parallel under the hood. Um, the number of threads that we use for collecting, of course, is important. Since it, this is top of the world, we want to use probably all the cores of the machine to, to do the collection. With G1, so obviously, if we do parallel collector, that doesn't scale well with, with the heap size, because um, it's, uh, yeah, it has to stop 
uh, in order to collect. With G1, a lot of the collection happens concurrently when, when it comes to the old generation GC. Um, it also works well across different Java versions, although I would recommend using long-term support ones if you can. When it comes to tunables, uh, G1 is adaptive, and the main knob here is the target pause time. So if the collection took less than the target pause time, then it will tend to make the young gen larger because the young gen is um, more efficient to collect. So effectively, this becomes a knob between latency and throughput. And if the GC falls behind, the main knob to look at is GC time ratio. So that um, dictates how much CPU can the, can the GC use. Then we have um, processing references. This can be done parallel, and generally that's a good idea. And then there's a number of threads used for, for concurrent GC. The default is a fourth of the, the parallel GC threads, but maybe for high traffic it's worth increasing that. There's one problem that we've seen for low traffic systems. Because G1 is adaptive, it might actually kick in very late, past the point of the circuit breaker. And that might you know, trigger stability issues. So to fix that, you can force G1 to kick in sooner. So this example configuration will make the old gen kick in at 30% heap usage, and then we limit the new size to 45%. That leads up to a total of 75. We still have some headroom up to the circuit breaker. And finally, there's ZGC, which um, is, has generally very small pause times. And that's because even copying objects happens concurrently with the application. So it scales really well with, with heap size. The downside is, yeah, we don't have compressed pointers. And in theory, at least, throughput should not be as good as G1. In practice, I did not see that. Um, with Java 21, ZGC can also be generational, so that can help improve throughput. Um, otherwise, ZGC is also um, adaptive, and there's not much to tune really there. Some loose ends that we did not get to, uh, ZGC can return memory to the operating system, so that might uh, let that might make choosing the heap size a bit easier. And also, it plays nicely with um, huge pages and transparent huge pages. Though, again, did not test that to, to see the difference. Hopefully, we have a couple of minutes for questions. Is there any? Thank you. Um, on ZGC, yes. um, would you recommend it even if you don't have a terabyte of heap? You, you were saying at the, at the end it's useful in that scenario, but I mean, could you use it for 16 gigs or 20 gigs of heap? When, might it perform well? Yeah, um, it, it should perform well. It's just the overhead that is a little bit higher than with G1 because you have 64-bit pointers. Yeah. So if you can spare, like, you know, a few hundred megs of usable heap, then I think that's fine. To, to what advantage, though? So, I'm, so that's a cost. It's I, yeah. I, I don't think at 16 GB it will okay. give you anything that G1 does not really. Okay. Thanks. Any more questions? Okay. Then thank you. Oh, we okay. More. We have time for one question. <laughs> And you could always find this around if you know. Uh, I'm working with a uh, JVM with about 48 gigs of heap size. Um, considering uh, GC, uh, G1 versus ZGC, do you have any recommendations what the most efficient way would be to see advantages uh, of switching? Z ZGC versus G1 at 40 gigabytes? 48. 48. Yes. Yeah, so both of them will have uncompressed pointers. I think, I'm, I'm not sure there's much in it really at that size. I would try GC. You had a, an answer for that? or? Yeah. <laughs> okay, last answer, then we have to wrap up.
Actually, because it does not have compressed co pointers, and if you calculate a little bit, I would not use 48 gigabytes. Instead, go s slightly below 32 gigabytes, which would have the same effect. Mm, no, I yeah. don't think so. I don't think so. You don't you lose because it's like about the number of objects you have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the problem is if many. it depends on what system are you using. But if it's solar, you have many, many small objects, and there it makes a difference. Lucene, poor Lucene application is different, but okay. Okay, thank you, Radu and Rafa, for your insights. You. Uh, feel free to um, engage with them further if you want to discuss this further more. Okay, let's give them another round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>